Hello, Pastor Steve Waldron here, New Life Pentecostal Church, Albany, Georgia. Have you ever wondered what the Christian Science Church was, or the First Church of Christ Scientists? You've probably seen them around. Most major cities have one. These were started in the late 1800s by a lady by the name of Mary Baker Eddy. She had a uh, congregationalist background, and then she kind of got into New Thought. Now, she always denied that she got into New Thought, and began this um, sect with about 26 people started in Boston, Massachusetts. That's still where their headquarters church is. It got very large at one time. I think had close to a quarter of a million adherents. Right now, I think it's down to about 80,000 adherents. It's not as much as it used to be. They still got about 1,200 congregations, 1,200 reading rooms. I remember one time I was at a city and we were door knocking. We're kind of doing evangelism blitz for a week in a particular city. And where I was had a Christian science reading room. So just to get out of the heat sometimes, just to kind of try to go talk to somebody I might meet in there, I would go in that Christian science reading room for 20 or 30 minutes. It's kind of neat. And of course, the book that's going to be there is like their manual outside of the Bible. And that is a key of science, key to the scripture. And again, that's by Mary Baker Eddy. It came out, I think, about 1883, something like that. So I've got a copy of that. So what do these Christian scientists, what, what do they believe? Well, first of all, they believe that the material world really doesn't exist in so many words, that the spiritual world is the ultimate reality. And so they're very big. Her goal, she says, was to restore primitive Christianity, especially in respect to healing. So she would say healing is not a physical sickness, that healing actually is a defect in the mind. And so you don't really pray in Christian science. You have arguments in the mind to try to bring the mind to the proper thinking processes. And so like in the book of Genesis, she would have believed Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 through 2, 6, and this is what the practitioners primarily still believe, but then after verse 6, she would say that it was all superstition in this type of thing. She would say that the Father God, she would call him the Father Mother God. And I think they primarily refer to God as Mother right now. They would believe Jesus Christ is more of a way shower, not God in flesh per se. They would believe that the Holy Ghost is actually the first church of Christ scientists, that that is what the Holy Ghost is. So it's a kind of a hodgepodge religion. Now, most people know it today. If you listen to NPR and things, you'll see the, you'll hear the Christian Science Monitor. Beginning in 1950 down through the 1990s, I think it won seven Pulitzer Prizes. And so the Christian Science Monitor is known for its journalism, it's known around the world, so that's just a unique thing. I wrote down some things here. Let me just see if I'm leaving out uh, anything. Heaven and hell are not literal places, but a state of mind. They really don't have a doctrine of the soul. And so, uh, what category could we put this in? Maybe when it talks about new thought, it was very big in America in the 18 and 1900s, especially till about 1935, that, uh, you know, you, you would have positivism. People would say, in every way, every day and in every way, I'm getting better and better. And it was just a very positive time, and they might say something about God, but not really believe much about God, and this type of thing. So, Christian science, many people have died trying to, you know, it reminds one kind of, a, in a little way, of the word of faith movement that's out there, that I'm not really sick, and, you know, I, I'm really spiritual, and the physical world doesn't, doesn't work. Now, they will visit doctors for broken bones. They will get vaccinations if they're required by law. But again, there's been many lawsuits of parents with children and different things such as this over the decades just because of, of their uh, practices and people passing away. So anyhow, that is a look. If you've ever wondered what a First Church of Christ scientist is or the 
Church of Christ scientist. I know in downtown Atlanta you drive, there's this massive edifice, you know, it's beautiful. First Church of Christ scientist. So I hope this helps. God bless you. Live for God in truth.